Hi, Howard. How are you? Good, Holly. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. I'm here ready to take my little coffee break with you today. <laughs> so um, I'm just wondering if we can start perhaps. I have been all over your website all day today admiring and enjoying everything you've written, but for those of us who haven't, could you talk a little bit about mm -hmm. who you are and what you do? Sure. Uh, my name is Howard Fishman. I have a website called boomerizing.com and I concentrate on two main issues. One is for boomers to staying, who are concerned about remaining relevant in the workplace mm -hmm. and for people already in retirement remaining or finding purpose in that retirement because I find that um, in both areas there's a there's a there's not a lot of happiness because yeah. uh, boomers are in sort of in an age group now where the economy and the pandemic and the layoffs at work and um, sometimes not being able to afford the retirement they had hoped for there are a lot of big yeah. issues that are, you know, you almost have to say, let's push the, the pause button and talk about them and get real about them. And that's what I do, not only in my website, and I try to do that as gently as possible because I think there's a lot of feeling and emotion that people have about these issues. But I talk about that in my, in my classes as well and with my coaching clients. It's wonderful. I, from looking at your website earlier, um, I have so many questions, <laughs> but can I just start off by quoting you back to yourself and for anyone watching this? Because I, I saw this quote and first of all, I just love the writing and I love the way you write in a lively way. You know, it's, it's even the way you communicate is energetic and specific and um, for everyone watching, you'll see what I mean now. So uh, on his website, you write, I'll poke fun at societal norms, benchmark the learning and growth of successful third act practitioners, and stretch the boundaries of what's possible for our intrepid generation. Personal relevance will be celebrated and your own personal relevance will be amplified. Um, and I love that quote so much, I think, because relevance is a topic that comes up a lot. I mean, my, my parents are boomers and I sort of notice it in their conversation, conversation with their friends. Some of them are retired and they feel they maybe aren't ready to retire and how do they deal with that and how do they stay relevant, whether they're retired or not, like you said. Um, and I also notice it in other generations, but each generation has a very different set of challenges that I think a lot of people mm -hmm. don't recognize or take into account necessarily in the way that you probably do. So I'm just wondering yeah. if you could talk just a bit about that, about this idea of relevance and how relevance might look different to someone who's a boomer compared to someone who's in their early 20s just starting out. Um, sure. Well, I think you hit upon two main ideas. Okay. One is sort of this conflict that we have about what our retirements should be like. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's a conflict is because the only role models we have for retirement comes from our older generation, our parents, yeah. who are called traditionalists and they're called traditionalists for a reason. <laughs> Their idea of retirement was very different uh, from our retirement. We had different influences. Mm. Uh, we grew up in the 60s and 70s and uh, we had profound influence on the social mores and uh, political changes that happened during those yeah. years. Um, but they, we were disappointed a bit by uh, the lack of movement um, and uh, it wasn't as progressive as we'd hoped for. So we went inward and mm -hmm. that's why we started to be called the me generation. And okay. it, it's almost, it's almost um, amazing that the same generation can go through as many changes as we did but the biggest yes. change came much later on when we realized that toward the end of our first career uh, that we had decisions to make because we're, we were going to live 30 years longer 
and we had spent so much time evaluating ourselves that the thought of just going into some emptiness called re retirement was not going to work for us. So um, one of the things I talk to people about is, you know, planning for retirement so that that those fears don't become realized. And mm -hmm. we, we know that if you, if you Google retirement planning, you'll find mostly financial planning. Yes, but exactly. Nobody really yeah, that's knows. all that I've ever it's heard of. Frustrating. It's frustrating to yeah. all of us that there's nothing out there. Um, the odd part, part is that we make up such a huge part of the population that you think there would be a lot out there because we're also big consumers. But yeah. That's the ageism part where it, mm -hmm. the people making those decisions on how much information will be allowed out there. And I know that sounds conspiratorial, but it's true. Um, you know, it, it, they're looking at a younger audience. They're not so interested in us. And so, yeah. um, so if you don't know what you want to do in retirement, it's natural to then go to the, the piece about relevance, because if you're, you don't know what to do and you're wandering aimlessly through retirement, you're irrelevant essentially. And yeah. that's, that's where I tend to spend most of my time writing, thinking, mm -hmm. and teaching about. Okay. And the thing that I, that strikes me, just going back to what you said about, you know, it's, it's sounds conspiratorial, but it isn't, it's true. I think we all know that that's true, but that it, do you think, do you feel like it's changing a little bit in terms of, I'm just trying to think of examples of like even TV series that are being released now that are featuring characters that are of the boomer generation having adventures mm -hmm. and falling in love and, you know, creating, starting new businesses. I mean, there are a few things like Grace and Frankie is the one I have in mind on that, mm -hmm. that where they, they're, they're portraying retirement in a different way. And do you think mm -hmm. that that started earlier on or is that something that's just starting now? Well, I think it's just starting now. And I think okay. uh, Grace and Frankie or Frankie and Grace, I never know. Which <laughs> which, which never, Grace and Frankie. So, <laughs> uh, uh, I think that's a great, I think it's a great start. Okay. And I still think they're dealing stereotypically yes. with different issues. Yeah. In the same way that um, Will and Grace dealt stereotypically yeah. with gay issues. Now, both of them yes. are going to wind up being seminal moments yeah. for us because that's, it starts that way, sort of a little yeah. self-consciously, mm -hmm. and then it moves on to something um, like the Kaminsky method. I think it's on Netflix is yeah. a step forward. It's yeah. less stereotypical more reality-based, and it's about, um, you know, people who are a little more grounded than yeah. Grace and Frankie are. Yeah. Uh, and that's the thing that totally. sets me off a little bit about Grace and Frankie, that not everyone is living, you know, in a house on the beach no. in Arizona, <laughs> Southern California. So no. I think people, there's a market for us, you know, it's sort of like the bubble yeah. market the people on the East Coast and the West Coast. And yeah. um, so I don't know the demographic is precisely who watches that show, but I, I'm probably not too far off in that assumption. I think the, the, the amount of dollars spent on marketing um, to provoke consumption is not there yet for us. So that's, no. therefore you won't see that many more shows mm -hmm. like Grace and Frankie until some of that mindset switches around. And uh, I don't know what this coronavirus means for that. There were, for instance, more boomers being let back into the workplace and being rehired because it was very, there was basically no un unemployment and there was a talent gap. So a lot of boomers were being hired back. And I thought, well, that's just such a great sign. Yeah. But now I, we don't know where that's going. Um, I do yeah. think that as boomers, we have gone through so many things like this all assassinations in the 60s and the 70s, recessions, um, yes. you know, just mortgage crises. I think at one point someone might say, these guys might be looked at sort of as wisdom elders rather than just old people 
and you know allow us to give back a little more than we're currently allowed to give back to be mentors yeah and i think that's something if i can say like in my generation where our parents are boomers i think i i hear a lot of conversations among my friends of like you know my mom started university in her 50s um, mm -hmm. when her kids had finished university and and a lot of my friends and a lot of my parents friends they're talking about these things and i'm just wondering if you think i suppose my question for you is what can other generations do to help that along is there something that people my age can do to participate in this or is it just up to the boomers to say I'm relevant. You know, what would your advice be to people like me? <laughs> uh, I think to stop the fighting, like the OK Boomer thing. And <laughs> you know, I uh, I wasn't going to bring that up, but it's really there's some antagonism between the generations and boomers versus millennials versus yeah, yeah. and millennials are our children. We yeah. love them. We yeah. may find them difficult in the workplace, but it's not because they're difficult. What they represent and the acumen that they have technology-wise, and mm. uh, th there is just sort of um, a uh, impatience there. So I think maybe that's the answer. For everyone just to be more patient with each other and try to get the best of each other rather than looking at the things that we don't have in common. It, it's really natural for every generation to not enjoy the generations that came before. I mean, we, as a boomer generation, our big statement was, don't trust anyone over 30. Well, how did that work out for us? You know? It, I'm, it, I'm already it, screwed. Was, <laughs> no, that's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, that's, that's what happens. We somehow the field has to be level. And I'm hoping some of the things that we've learned from, you know, staying, sheltering in place will be to be more patient and, and have a different set of values that help us understand each other better. And I, I just wrote an article about how listening is the new being there. And mm -hmm. I feel like if we could all listen to each other better and put, take ourselves out of the way, we will all be better together and we'll be more empathic. And really, if you give someone space to talk, they'll reveal their true selves to you. And that's what I'm after, because in that revelation, we can, we can talk to each other, we can have a, a more meaningful conversation, and that will break down all those ideas of incompatibility. Yeah. So I'm wondering if you have any words of advice for people in this current mm -hmm. situation, either, I mean, I suppose the, the group that I'm most thinking about at the moment are the people who had that, you know, goal retirement to, I'm going to retire and move here. And then they mm -hmm. get there and then they haven't planned what they're doing. And now they're stuck at home and they really can't even do anything. Mm -hmm. Where can someone in that position start? How could they maybe take these first steps towards what you're talking about, even though they can't leave the house? Well, that's a great question. And I think we're now in the frozen in the headlights kind of situation yeah. for many of us. And I think we have to start looking at how to become what one of my mentors, Chip Conley says, a modern elder. And- I love it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that implies wisdom and we have to use yeah. that wisdom on ourselves as well. And we know that the way we've done things in the past is to have a plan, whether it was putting together a budget or working in your office and having a project to work on, you can't yeah. do it successfully without a plan. I would say take the time to do some deep thinking and deep listening to yourself. Mm -hmm. we, we know by listening to our inner voice what's right or wrong for us. So I think, you know, just stabilize, meditate, you know, do some solid mm -hmm. thinking and then put something on paper because the worst thing that can happen is that we come out of this horrible spot we're in now financially and help you know well-being and feel that we haven't moved forward in any way and so it's each you know each and every one of us our responsibility now is to do that thinking and start that planning yeah and i i hope that 
many people in, in the Boomer group can contact you and, and then make their plan and come out of this mm -hmm. feeling. And every, every group though, every, every single group. Every I, single I just group. Stress that. I will say every single group, but I do feel like my group is getting a lot of attention mm -hmm. and yours is getting attention in the way that's protect them. They're vulnerable. They need to, you know, and so oh, I, exactly. I still and would emphasize just, your group can also. Yeah, come yeah, but if, you, but if, you, if you kind of move that out of your mind, because that's just yeah. what you're supposed, you're made to think. Exactly. Yeah. You, know, you know, then that's ageism. Um, exactly. Really working hard to, to provoke those kinds of thoughts. Yes. We're, then we're not like that. No. Most of us, anyway. No. And so I hope that many people go to your website, which will be linked around this video up above, below, somewhere around here. They'll go Great. to your website and read your, just read what you write because in every generation, and because I, I found it a, a really powerful resource and, and a really interesting way to read a different perspective and to even consider planning for retirement as something beyond financially planning for retirement. You know, it's mm -hmm. just, I think what you're doing is marvelous and everyone should know about it. So thank you. Thank you. And thanks for like grabbing hold of that idea because that's even the title of my website is Boomer Rising. And I did that very yeah. purposefully because it's positive and uplifting yeah. and I don't see limits to how far no. we can go just as I didn't see limits when I was, uh, you know, whatever version of millennial was when I was that age, yeah. you know, so yeah. that's important for all of us to not think there's a cap on what we can achieve. Yeah. And so I just, I really thank you for your time and energy and for sitting down and chatting with me. <laughs> because... You're very welcome. It's been, it's been great. And it's, it's great to meet and know you. <laughs>